a lover of sports, video games, movies, and most things nerdy, tonight's night speaker is Associate Dean of the Bow Valley College Center for Entertainment Arts. A graduate of multiple universities, he oversees six programs at Bow Valley. Please welcome Jeff Clemens. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, as you can see, I'm Jeff Clemens. This is my best Sophia Smith pose, uh, which fits along with what I'm going to talk about today, which is the spectacular journey of saying yes. Uh, saying yes to things, uh, which leads us into what I did uh, tonight of being here, uh, and then will also lead us into my first response when I was asked to do this. <laughs> yeah, no, no, immediately my first thought is no. It's really stressful up here. Um, it was going to be something, there's video games at home that aren't being played right now. Um, I, I, they'll be there later, but I, can, I should be doing that. And so as all those reasons played through my head, I thought, what am I gonna do? How do I get there? And yeah, I did, I did come here. So there's the question on there. Thank you, Steve, for getting me up here. Um, so probably was the no. That was the moment when I said, oh, no, 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 I can't do this. Let me check my calendar. Oh, you son of a bitch, I'm in. Um, so I'm here, the FOMO, the possibility of miss missing out, the opportunity to be here, to do this, to go think, oh, what if, what if I didn't? Um, and so that's the purpose of the presentation today. It's that opportunity to say yes, to think of those valuable times when you have that chance to say, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna pay attention to the positive. I'm gonna look at the good side of things. I'm gonna look at what could come from this. I'm gonna go with it. Now, because I'm an educator, I'm gonna throw some words up there to bore you a little bit. Um, but this is the, what this is, is this is the optimization framework. And the idea of it is that basically you look back 80 years from now and you go, will I regret not doing that? And if the answer is yes, you, you should probably do it. Uh, and then because I'm again, educator, so I'm gonna bore you a little bit more, we also have the, the regret, uh, I can't read anything. Uh, this is the risk management framework. And the idea is that you look and you say, okay, what is the worst that can happen? What if I fail? What happens? Eh, which could be big, it could be huge. But the idea is that you think, what am I gonna do? So now that we've talked about what's the worst that can happen, if I haven't convinced you yet, that's the point. Nothing, nothing. If I fail up here, you'll laugh at me, which is great. That's awesome, I get some laughs. And we go. Now, so what I want you to move into is I want you to move from no to yes, but. We're just starting with baby steps. Now, you're probably wondering why She-Hulk is up here. <laughs> now, I got that She-Hulk from Phil Kramer, who actually was the lead uh, animator and the lead designer on the She-Hulk TV show. He was asked to make a tiny woman into a giant Hulk. And when he met with our students, he said, his answer was yes, but. But what do I do? And so he said yes. Uh, so the but is, what do you need to be successful? Do you need more learning? Do you need more help? Do you need more time? What do you need? And so you think about what you need, uh, and then you also think of what's the worst that can happen, which is why this is up here, because he also did Morbius. Um, so apparently that's the worst that can happen. Um, so what, what stops us from saying yes? Usually it's failure. We think, oh, it's the fear that's coming. We're taught at a young age that failing is bad. We need to avoid it at any cost. But do we? I, I don't think so. I think that we can always look at that and we can look at the acronym of fear being false evidence appearing real. Again, I'm gonna throw things up and you're gonna see the failure of, uh, the reason that my students are still gonna have a job because AI can't do anything right. <laughs> um, so what it means is fear isn't real. Now, fear is sometimes real. I deal with a lot of students. Please, if it's going to kill you, don't do it. Don't say yes and don't say, well, Jeff said it'd be cool. Don't do that. Um, but when we do, when we work on that, when we're brave enough to get in front of people, when we're brave enough to talk about to things and do things, great things happen. So an example of this recently was I went on a cruise with my family. My daughter loves Taylor Swift. She loves singing. She didn't want to get up and do karaoke. I love karaoke. So I told her, get up there. What's the worst that can happen? Well, the worst that happened in this case is she sang Shake It Off and got a standing ovation. <laughs> so that's the lesson that she learned on there. She learned on the cruise that hey, nobody's gonna laugh at you, and if they do, eh, screw it, you got some good laughs and you get something out of it. So she then later sang over and over again and I was not allowed to sing with her because I wasn't good enough. <laughs> so now what I want you to do is, because I'm gonna bring the engagement in, is I want everybody to stand up here. Think about what you've done in the past year or a decision you made where you said no. You said no to something and you regret it. And 
Can you even just put your hand up if you're in there? I realize I can't actually see hands. <laughs> this is a problem. Um, but it's okay. It's okay that you said no. It's okay that you did miss something. Thank you for putting your hands up. I was really worried that I would be the only one with my hand up and that we'd have a really empty audience. Um, and also, if you didn't want to stand or put your hand up, that's also okay. Next time, say yes, and we'll go with it. <laughs> um, so as I've gone through this, I, I've made it easy to say yes. I made it sound easy. You're thinking there, you're like, oh, it's easy to say it up on stage in front of 400 people. Yeah. Um, but here's a couple decisions I made um, that could have been really bad, um, but this is my journey of yes. So when I finished university, I was done with school which apparently was wrong because now I work there. Um, but I spent 18 years of my life in school. Please don't do the math on how long it took me to get through my first degree. Um, I, I was like, I'm gonna move. Um, I'm, I'm getting out of here, I need to go somewhere. So I asked my girlfriend, wife now, um, where do you wanna move? And she said, I've always wanted to go to Japan. So we went. I went online, I went on Facebook and I found a place where we could teach English privately. We got a working holiday visa. I was young once, um, and we were on the train. We had paid money, we were ready to go, and she turned to me on the train in, in Hokkaido and said, what if it's a scam? <laughs> I don't know. I guess we get a good trip and we go back and see if chapters will have us. <laughs> and so then my next story, so I, I got an English degree and a journalism diploma. So I was really setting myself to get laid off a lot. <laughs> Um, so I faked my way into digital marketing and I worked at Marks and I actually had the chance to work with the NHL and a whole bunch of other teams and I won a Golden M. I launched their sponsorship. And now I get to work at the Center for Entertainment Arts. I get to work with students and I, I got to talk on CBC yesterday uh, about video games. And then I play video games with students. So that's where I've gotten by saying yes and embracing the change.